Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. You may have seen our tutorial on how to make the Lone Star wall hanging using jelly roll strips. And we got a lot of comments. People were asking, can't we make a big quilt using jelly rolls? Here's the wall hanging size. Lone Star is a very popular quilt to make, but it can be difficult. Now my method is easy and we have this nice small size here, but we're gonna make a big quilt. We're gonna use a whole jelly roll and some background and that's all we need to make a nice big Lone Star. Here is the background that I think I'm going to use here. Let's open up the jelly roll and let's look at the fabrics on this background and then we can tell do they really stand out? Do they look good? That is really going to be nice because we've got so many bright colors here that they are all just going to pop off of that black background. For my star quilt, I'm only going to need 36 fabrics. So I might look at all of these, pick out the ones that I don't like quite as well, or if there are any that won't show up against the background, I would pull those out. These are all going to look really nice. So I'm going to use three strips at a time to, and make strip sets. I have everything divided into sets of three for my strip sets. Be sure to find one set that has a very prominent dark color and put that on the side, not in the middle, of one of your strip sets and we're going to use this for the very center of the star so that'll be right in the points right in the very middle. Now take the first set and sew these side by side along their long edges. So I'm going to open this up and this one's going to go right next to it and that'll go on my lap and we'll sew it on afterwards. So use a quarter inch seam and use a fairly small stitch length because after we make these strip units, we're gonna cut them and we don't want our stitching to come apart. So use a small stitch, maybe 12 to 15 stitches per inch. Quarter inch seam and don't stretch either piece. Just put them right on top of themselves and stitch carefully down the edge. Now I'm going to finger press this to one side. So open it up. I use my fingernail, but you can use just the pad of your finger. And you just want the seam going to one side. We're gonna iron it later, but this step really makes that ironing step go much easier. Now we're gonna add one more strip, same procedure. This hasn't even been ironed yet, but look how nice and flat it is because we finger press. So I like to smooth it out with my hands and then get a yardstick or a straight edge and make sure you've got it nice and straight here, then iron it. So I'm gonna iron a little with no steam and once it's flat, then I'm gonna steam it. Now do the same thing with all the rest of your strip units. Once you have your strip units ironed nice and flat, you're gonna take one and fold it in half. Then we are going to put one of the edges along our 45 degree line here. So I'm gonna put this edge right on that line. You wanna have it nice and straight. You also wanna make sure that wherever you're gonna start cutting, I'm gonna start on the 20 here, that you've got 10 inches over, so that if you do a cut there, you can you won't you don't want to have it slid up too far i won't be able to get a whole piece so i'm going to be cutting between the 10 and the 20. once you have it nice and straight everything lined up put your plastic ruler 
right on top of your lines here and make a nice clean cut. Now we are going to move over two and a half inches. So it's a little easier if I turn my ruler around than you can see. So here's my first cut. I'm going to move over two and a half inches. Line it up again on your green mat and make another cut. And keep moving over two and a half inches till you've got four cuts. And then I'll show you what those, what those look like. Now here is what we have. Let me move this scrap aside and move that scrap aside. We have strip units that are all sewn. We're gonna put half here and half here. So they're already diamonds, they're already sewn. Now take all of these that are wrong side up and put them all in one stack. And all of these that came from the bottom, all in another stack. So we're gonna cut all our strip units and we're gonna keep them separated. So I'm moving them way apart. So keep those wrong side up ones over here, keep the right side up ones over here. We aren't gonna mix them until we get almost the whole quilt done because that way we can have a quilt that has all straight grains and it'll sew together much flatter and much easier. Now these scrap pieces, we're not just going to discard these. I'm gonna turn these around. I'm gonna put the bottom on one of my lines and I'm gonna point it right at this line here. Same thing here. Line it up again if it moved a little when you were cutting. So I'm gonna use these scrap pieces. I'm gonna cut them six inches wide. And these pieces we will use for a bonus border. So let me show you what this will make. That we're not gonna use, but these pieces, I'm gonna mix these with the scraps from other blocks and we will stitch them together. They'll be more colorful because we'll have other blocks. And we're gonna get squares here. We're gonna get half square triangles that are already pieced. And we can use that for a bonus border when the quilt is done. Now I have all of the strip units cut up and I'm only working with those that were right side up when I did my strip unit cutting. Now we're gonna take these and when you put three of them side by side, that is going to make a pieced diamond. Then we're gonna take three more and we can make another diamond. Now let's use three more. And then we'll take our last three and we'll make one more diamond way up there. Now, if you don't like the layout, you can switch rows around, you can turn them upside down. I just wanted to get kind of a nice blend of colors and I think I've got it here. So we're going to take this over to the machine and stitch it together. This is what we want when, when it's all stitched together. When we stitch the seam, we want that line to be one continuous line. So that means when you put this right sides together, you need to slide this up so that when you're one quarter inch from the edge here, that your stitching will start right in that intersection there. Now, I like to put some pins here so that I know I'm going to match. So if I'm one quarter inch from the edge on this seam here, I can stick this pin through here and it's gonna wanna go right on that seam there. So I'm just gonna put that there and stick that pin in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the next intersection. After you get the knack of this, you aren't gonna need the pins, but at first they're very helpful. So a quarter inch from the edge along that seam line and then same thing here, a quarter inch from the edge along that seam line. Now we're gonna stitch. And we're gonna see how close we come to having an exact match. Basically, since your pin right here is sticking in right where you wanna drive over, you can pull it out and just point there because you wanna drive right over where that pin is sticking in. But move it before you hit it. Now, when we open this up, pretty perfect there. 
almost perfect there. And that is what you want to see is a nice straight line along here. Now I'm not going to finger press this seam. I'm not going to finger press it by pulling it. I'm just going to squash it a little bit because this is bias along here. And if I go like that, it's going to stretch. So just smash it a little bit flat. And now we'll do the same procedure here. Now there's some important things to keep in mind when you're ironing these. You want to pat it flat without stretching it. Because it's on the bias here, this will stretch. So you want to iron in the direction of the straight grain. So in this case, my grains are going like this. So I can iron this way, and I can iron across the grain. But try not to iron like that. So see how the grain is going like this? Always check your grain. You can iron in that direction. That way, you won't stretch it out of shape. If you stretch it and pull it as you're ironing, it won't be the right shape diamond. It'll still be diamond, but it won't lay flat when you try to get your whole quilt done. You can trim off these dog ears here if you like, but it's not really critical. There's that one all stitched together. Now I'm going to stitch this together, this together, and this together. And then I'm gonna take all of these extra pieces and repeat the same procedure. They're gonna, they're gonna be exactly the same. So I will end up with four of this diamond, four of that one, four of that one, and four of that one. All of our little strip units are now sewn into diamonds. So we've got four complete diamonds in each one of these stacks. I'm gonna start putting this together by sewing this seam here. Same method we used before. You need to slide this up just a little bit and then check where your match is gonna be by sticking a pin in here and then start sewing. I don't always use pins. It's kind of a matter of personal preference, but sometimes I like to put it through to see if I've got it on the line. Once you've made a lot of these, you can actually stitch them without pins. Now again, just kind of squish it. And here's a spot here where I didn't match up very well. My seam is probably a little too deep right there. So let me show you how to fix that. Right here, my seam is a little bit deeper than a quarter inch. So I'm just gonna snip this out and restitch it a little narrower and then that seam will match up perfectly. I'm not restitching the whole seam, just the part that was too deep. Now let's see if it matches better. Yeah, just about perfect. Now we'll sew this to this, same method. Last step is to sew these two together. Here's the big diamond that we made. So finish that same procedure. You'll get four of these. And then when that's done, take your other pieces, I've got them hidden under here, your ones that are right side down, same procedure and make four big diamonds with those. And then I'll show you how to put them together. All the big diamonds are done. They're so much fun to make. Now this is the first set. There's four exactly the same. That's what I sewed together first. Now the grain is all straight. Now this is the second set. I used the same procedure, but the fabrics are not in the same order. The only thing I made sure was that I had purple in the center. Now we're just gonna alternate these all the way around to get our big star. So this is gonna go here. And then this one's gonna go here. And now you can see we've got half a star there and it's all laying with the grain exactly straight. Now that we have the star parts done, we're just gonna work with one quarter of the quilt at a time. I don't like to have to do Y seams, so I've come up with a way where we can do this with no Y seams, and that's by working with one quarter, and we just fill in with these triangles. So we're going to, instead of putting one big square, We've got a square that's cut in half. 
And if we sew these triangles two at a time onto our diamond, we can sew this very last seam here and we will have no Y seams. So we're gonna sew this to this and this to this. Same thing over here. I have all of the corners in and the whole star put together. Now I'm gonna to have to iron it. It didn't start out this flat, I've already ironed a little. You're gonna to have to pull this over your big ironing board and just make sure that you keep ironing with the grain. It will come out flat. It just takes a little bit of effort. Now for a little bonus border, these are all those squares that we got when we were cutting our strip units. All I'm gonna do is put these in a row. I've cut some black fabric here. This is nine inches square, cut both ways. Now you don't have to remember the numbers. We'll have them in the free pattern. But if you cut it both ways, you will have a straight grain here. Now we're just gonna take these triangles and fill them in here until we have a whole border. And I'm gonna use seven of these blocks. I'm gonna add a little black at the end and then I'm gonna center it on the quilt. So I'm gonna put that on the quilt, add a little black border, then get it quilted up. I'm so surprised at how bright this quilt came out. I know we used bright batiks, but the whole effect is just brilliant. Yeah, Donna, I'm really pleased with how this came out. Yeah. I remember you and I were down here on a Sunday and I was picking out bright batiks and I kept picking them and picking them. I picked out 40 different prints. We, you made this just beautiful. I love the way you did this. I love also the way you added this border. So those are just the bonus squares that we got when we cut out the diamonds. So here's one of the diamonds we made. It's right here. And there's four of those little guys in each big diamond. Very nice. And the thing that gives the quilt balance is the fact that this diamond is exactly the same as this one and the same as that and the same as that. Beautiful. So it just gives it like this purple, you can see it's, you don't notice it when you're sewing, but it makes the whole effect nice and it balanced. It really does. And how do you like the black? I, I love the black. You know, <laughs> I was gonna use a light background. Yeah. I thought light background would have looked a lot better, but Matt said, no, you gotta use the black. Boy, was he right. Well, it looks good. Yeah. You could do a lot of things with this. Beautiful job. Now the quilt came out 58 by 74. It's a nice throw size. You could easily make it bigger by picking out a couple of these bright colors and adding some borders around. And we will have this as a free pattern. It's a free pattern, so you don't have to remember any of these sizes or numbers. We used a nice purple on the back. You can see the quilting there. It's a nice swirly pattern. And I used a turquoise blue thread because I wanted it to show up in here a little bit. It gives it just a really nice, nice texture. Thanks for watching the video today. We hope you enjoyed it.